Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. I'm watching my cat. Whoop! Don't get... Whoop, 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 whoop. All right, that was exciting. She has set her tail on fire in the past, so uh, having her get that close to a candle is an issue. I'm Pastor Peg Harvey Morales. I'm the pastor of Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church in Lewiston, Idaho, and the pastor of Genesee Lutheran Parish in Genesee, Idaho. We began Bind Us Together back in March when we were on first on stay-at-home orders as a way to remind us that we are not alone. God is always with us, God is always loving us, and God will never abandon us. We are the body of Christ, and we are connected through the communion of saints. We are not alone. So, um, I see nobody has joined me this morning live, and I don't blame you. Uh, this is, uh, oh, one person finally showed up. All right. Um, this is the morning after uh, what um, never thought we would see in the United States. Of America, um, the siege of the Capitol, um, an attempt to um, to stop our elected officials from doing the job that they were elected to do, and um, <laughs> I hardly even know what to say um, on on this day. Um, I was uh, focusing on the epiphany uh, starting yesterday when it was the day of epiphany, the coming of the, the wise men, uh, the magi, to, uh, to greet the, the newborn king. We read that uh, story yesterday. And, um, and I think it is still an important uh, lesson for us to read on this day uh, that uh, our call is to be bound together, um, that the, the day of Epiphany is about the, the light of God going out to all nations. And so the Magi are symbols of all the nations uh, coming together to worship uh, the Christ child. Uh, it is not about me and mine over against you and yours, but it is about uh, what unites us, which is supposed to be the love of Christ. And um, as I watched uh, the events unfold yesterday and saw videos of the Christian flag being carried into the floor of the Senate uh, by a, a protester, um, I was saddened uh, because that is a witness to our Lord Jesus, and it is um, blasphemy. So anyway, <laughs> um, how are you feeling this morning? How are you feeling? If, if you're uh, willing to share, uh, go ahead and type it in. This is 
Oh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, read the the reading that I, I selected yesterday before any of this started for today. Um, but I think that it's important for us to hear again uh, in, in the light of what happened in our capital yesterday. So this is uh, the appointed Old Testament reading for the day of Epiphany, which was yesterday. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and the glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels uh, shall cover you and the young camels of Midian Epha and all those from Sheba shall come. I don't want to be covered by camels, but that that just uh, uh, touched me as a little bit funny today. <clears throat> so I think that this is a day for us to think about uh, how we shine and what message we give the world about who Jesus is. Because I saw some folks yesterday giving the message um, that I reject, that, um, that violence and might to uh, take over the capital of our country, that that is the light of Christ. And unfortunately, for lots of people who are, um, who are, oh, I didn't see your, I didn't see your uh, comments this morning. I apologize. So good morning to Jean and to Ellen. And uh, Jean says that she feels sad. Ellen says she feels disappointed. And Aggie says that I think we need to pray for civility in the world. Amen to all of that. Absolutely. Um, so uh, the, the season of Epiphany, and Epiphany is a revelation. And um, the revelation of, of Christ uh, into the world. And this is not a revelation that is based on... Uh, on hatred. It is not a revelation that is based on violence. This is a revelation based on love. The love of Christ, the love of God that sent Christ into the world. And um, that is to be reflected by the church and by individual Christians. Um, and that is um, the, the message that I want to, to share this day. Um, the one thing that I will share, uh, other than being sad and disappointed and, and needing to pray for civility in the world, which I agree with absolutely all of that, is um, that last night um, I had horrible nightmares um, about people coming after me that I could not stop. And there was a crowbar involved and even a crowbar uh, 
beating on people's heads. I mean, this was a really bad dream. Um, could not stop those coming after me. It was horrible, <laughs> a horrible dream. I did not sleep well afterwards. I didn't want to go back to sleep after that. Um, but uh, watching, I had to just finally stop watching uh, the news uh, yesterday evening because I couldn't take it anymore um, uh, for, for my mental health. Um, not that I want to ignore what's going on, but uh, there's kind of this um, uh, post-traumatic stress syndrome going on in my dreams, and I'm sure in other folks as well. So anyway, um, the the epiphany. What are, you know? How are we seeing Christ revealed? What are we learning? In, in the midst of this holy season after Epiphany um, that is comparable to the season after um, Easter. When this great revelation has happened, how does this transform who we are um, as individuals and as, as the church? Um, and I, had considered completely changing what I was going to do this morning, um, including the song, but I think that the song still needs to be sung. And this is Rise, Shine, You People. And it uh, doing verse one and verse three. Rise, shine, you people, Christ the Lord has entered. Our human story, God in him is centered. He comes to us by death and sin, surrounded with grace unbounded. Come celebrate your banners high unfurling, your songs and prayers against the darkness hurling. To all the world go out and tell the story of Jesus' glory. All right, I like that song because it's perky, it's shiny, and um, it is uh, uh, a song to uplift us after a very difficult day. So our prayers today, we want to continue to pray for the Stearns family um, as they mourn the the death of walter um i'll be doing the graveside uh private graveside service tomorrow um and then uh for uh prayers for um bev reed uh, i haven't had an update uh on her um i'm assuming that she is either has come home or is um uh, the family is preparing to bring her home. Uh, and the, the prayer is really for peace in uh, what will happen in the next few days, weeks, and months for her and for her family. And as Aggie said, uh, we need to pray for civility in the world. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and you know, what politics in the, the United States, if you look historically, it, it has not been the most civil thing in the world, um, but we're better than that. We are better than that. Um,
So I also want to pray for um, a peaceful transition of power. Uh, President-elect Biden has now been certified um, by Congress. Uh, it will happen in less than two weeks. And um, and uh, I'm going to go out on a limb here, and I'm going to say that uh, we need to pray for uh, President Trump and for um, President-elect Biden. that that peaceful transition of power can actually happen. And I also want to um, pray for our nation, uh, for healing as we meet, move forward. So I see no other um, prayer concerns uh, listed there today. Uh, I think this is probably enough for us to pray about today. So, the Lord be with you. Gracious and loving God, we come before you on the morning after an incredible day in the United States. Uh, one that is not um, uh, a day of pride for us. Lord, we pray for civility in the world. We pray for an understanding of our elected officials that um, words have consequences and that uh, stoking the flames of the uh, extremes uh, only brings about what we saw yesterday. We lift up President Trump and President-elect Biden. And as we prepare for a peaceful transition of power that has never been in question before uh, in uh, the history of our country, uh, we pray that uh, your Holy Spirit will be upon each one of these men that they will do what is right and good in your eyes. We lift up our nation and we pray for healing. We pray that um, those responsible for what happened yesterday uh, will pay the consequences of that. Uh, that justice will um, be brought to bear. And we pray that uh, we would be able to uh, lift our heads as Christian people and say that this is not what Christ would have us do. We lift up the Stearns family as they mourn the death of Walter. We ask that you comfort the family and uh, be with them as they prepare to say goodbye to him tomorrow. We lift up Bev Reed um, and pray for peace for her in these days and weeks ahead. And we pray for her husband, Steve, and for the whole family um, as they walk through this difficult time for them. Lord, in all things, we turn to you. We trust in you, and we give you thanks for all that you have given us. Most of all, we thank you for our Lord Jesus Christ, who came into the world to save us all. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. My friends, thank you for being here this morning. And remember, be kind. Wash your hands. Stay at home if you don't need to go out. 
Remember your neighbors. Share the good news. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.